pray. God, be in my head and in my understanding. God, be in my eyes and in my looking. God, be in my mouth and in my speaking. God, be in my heart and in my thinking. God, be at my end and at my departing. Amen. The scripture is from the Gospel of Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 38 to 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset by many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Um, so, you know, the most important lesson that, um, just a second, I got an update here on the open. You want to know what Tiger's doing? Oh, I, never mind. This is more important. We got to focus. We got to focus now. All right. So the most important lesson that we can take away from God's word today is the importance of listening, of listening to God, of really Focusing, just a second, uh, oh yeah, or Ryan Braun, uh, never mind. Um, okay, so anyway, focusing, focusing on the word, because when we are with Jesus, we need to focus. You know, oh, it's, I got a text here, uh, okay, it's just my son. All right. Um, so anyway, you see, the thing is, in life, what's important is that we set aside our distractions so that we can focus on Jesus. Now, as you're sitting there, as you're sitting there, where, are you distracted at all? Are you distracted at all by trying to listen to Jesus? I mean, isn't this really distracting to you? What, what, what's going on with that phone, right? You see, I'm the paid listener. I am the paid listener to Jesus. You pay me to focus on listening to Jesus and come up here undistracted. Um, oh, here. What is green and makes holes? A drill pickle. See, now this is very distracting, isn't it? I, I just got to turn this off. I mean... The thing is, what we got to do is we got to be focused, friends. And of course, in today's world, that is harder and harder to do. We have moms, of course, who are trying to figure out how to do all of their tasks at one time. And yet here we are as a denomination, the Reformed Church in America, that's the international, Canadian, American, the U.S. churches that we belong to. You know, we have this new statement. It's called transformed and transforming. So what's my job? What's the job of our church? The job of our church is to say to you, okay, what we want you to do is we want you to transform. We want you to be transforming agents, bringing change to your life, bringing change to the church, bringing change to the world. And how are you going to do that? Well, you're going to spend an hour a day with Jesus. No, you're not. We know that. I know that. I know that I can say that every day 
the rest of this year. And it's going to be just too hard. So how are we going to do this? How are we going, you know why we're not? Because here's, you, and here's what you'll say to me. You'll say, look, I signed up for VBS. I signed up for the nursery. I'm running the golf team. I'm running men building bridges. I'm running RCA women's missions. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And you would be right. And I would say, thank you. We could not be the church without you. Now stop. And you would say, I don't have time to stop. I got my job, I got my kids, I got my mother I got to visit, I got to do this, I got to do that. I don't have time to stop. And Jesus would say to you, Martha, Martha, be merry. So you know the story, right? You know this story that Mary and Martha are sisters. Story opens up, Mary opens her house up to Jesus, extends hospitality to Jesus. And as Jesus comes in, she's getting all the preparations there, and Mary, her sister, comes over and sits down at Jesus' feet, and Mary gets all upset about it. Martha gets all upset about it, says something about it to Jesus, and Jesus says, no, Mary has chosen the necessary thing. She's chosen the one thing, the better part. I love what John Calvin says about this. Here's what he says. You see, John Calvin, he was sort of uh, really into, like, work, 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 work. John, that's what, you know, John was not a resting kind of guy. So when people interpreted this story to mean that it's okay for, you know, what we really should do is all model Mary. We should all go be monks. We should move up into the mountains and not have anything to do with anybody. Calvin said, no, 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 that's a horrible understanding of this story. What this story is about is the difference between an accessory thing and a necessary thing. So Jesus says Mary is doing the necessary thing. Now, what Calvin wants us to understand, and what I'm hoping you will understand, is that the accessory thing is important, too. Here's the accessory thing, right? Working on VBS. That's an accessory thing. That's something that is important. It's making the meal for Jesus. It's an important thing to do. But it is not the one necessary thing. What Jesus wants most in your life as a disciple is that you will spend time Time with him alone. And so Calvin says, never confuse the accessory, the working on this and that, with the necessary. Put the phone down, turn off the computer, focus on Jesus. Be merry. Here's a couple of words, right, in this scripture. Listening. Listening, good. Distracted, bad. Mary is listening. Martha is distracted. Now get that, right? It's not that what she's doing is a bad thing. It's not that Martha's bad for preparing a meal for Jesus. Why, of course, we all would prepare a meal for Jesus if he came to our house. Jesus is just saying, don't be distracted by that. I know you're going to prepare the meal, and it smells great, but just come here and sit and talk with me for a minute. That's what Jesus is saying. Don't confuse the good, the listening, by becoming distracted. Now, I did a lot lot of reading this week about listening. Listening, I learned, is an art and a science. And here's the thing about it. One of the studies I read said that you will forget 75% of what I said by the time you get to your car. 75% of what I said is the equivalent of blah, 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 in your ear by the time you get to your car. So my job is to help you figure out how, how can I help you retain 25%. 25% of what we're talking about, how can I do that in a way that you will remember it? Now, you might say, make your sermon shorter. No, that is not an option. You're confusing the necessary with the, I mean, the, anyway. So here's the 25%, all right? 25%. I've tried to boil it down like this. 
Anyone who wants to be a disciple of Jesus. You want to be a disciple of Jesus? You are a disciple of Jesus. You want to be a transformed, transforming disciple of Jesus? Down to four words. Four words. Merry moments. Merry moments. Those are two of them. The other two words, hallelujah moments. Hallelujah moments, all right? That's it. By the time you get to your car, I want you to be able to remember that. Merry moments. Hallelujah moments. Now let's figure out what those are. You know, I understand telling you to spend 30 minutes a day with Jesus is a reach. You would say, well, why don't you just tell me to spend eight hours a day sleeping, 30 minutes a day exercising, prepare three healthy meals, one of which should be spent around the table for a two-hour meal with my family, and you would say, what planet do you live on, Pastor Bill? I get it. I get that. I'm listening to what your lives are like. Jesus is listening to what your lives are like. And that's why I call these moments. Because in today's world, unless you're a paid listener like me, it's really hard to carve out the time. I'd love it if you would. I'm going to give you an idea for that later. But at least go for the moments, right? At least go for the undistracted moments of focused listening. That's what I'm trying to get at. Undistracted moments of focused listening. That's what we're trying to do. Now, I know we've made it possible to eat, drink, drive all at the same time. That doesn't mean it's a good idea. I know that we've given moms and dads all these multiple demands that are next to impossible. The family meal is a constant challenge with phones that all of us are using. Kids get a very clear message about where they stand in the order of priority as they watch their parents listen to a mobile device. And talking to teenagers, Stay-at-home dads are a great idea if they're really with the child. And then there's the battle for attention on Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night, some college games on Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. No wonder Tasty Tiki Taco is on Tuesday because it's the only day there's not a football game. It's the one day a couple can actually spend at the evening looking at, I mean, listening to each other. The point I'm trying to make is this. You can be a better listener. I can be a better listener. There are books you can buy about how to listen. One of the books I, I was reading about this week is a book for parents about how do you listen to your baby. So there's, you can have training classes on so you can listen to your baby so you know when your baby cries this way, it means one thing, when the baby cries that way, it's another. Learning to listen to babies. And then we have to, what is one of the main jobs of parents to teach our children how to listen? We have uh, guests this week, our uh, daughter and her husband are here and our son and daughter-in-law and the boys are here. And so we have this one five-year-old grandson and his mother is trying to teach him to listen, so I, his name is Joshua. I say, Joshua! And he keeps staring at the whatever was on the TV. His mother says, Joshua, I heard somebody call your name. Silence. Joshua, what do we say when somebody calls our name? Silence. Joshua, there are three options you have when someone says your name. I don't remember both of all of them, but I, one of them was something the equivalent of saying, huh. So at least I got a huh from my five-year-old grandson that he could get away from the television long enough to say, huh? And then, of course, the rest I said he blanked out on. But the point is we have to learn. Learning to listen some, is something we learn as children, and we have to keep trying to learn as adults. Now, look, as couples or as people who have close friends that you're with a lot, There's all sorts of books you can buy. I'm going to summarize. I'm going to save you $100 right now. Look at each other when you talk to each other. 
What a radical thought, right? Look at each other when you talk to each other. Now, I also read a book that says, is uh, staring too long at somebody creepy looking. So don't do that. Don't do the creepy looking part. But when you talk to somebody, it's okay to look them in the eye, right? In fact, it's a better way to communicate. Ask your children, when I'm talking to you, would you please look at me for three seconds? Okay, now here's another little clue I read about. Nodding. Okay, so, well, like, I would feel really encouraged if when I said, so you're getting everything I say, right? And you go, "Mm mm-hmm, yeah, see, oh, look at the encouragement I get. Right back there I saw a big nod. Thank you very much. And so encourage each other as you communicate with a nod. But I also learned this. One nod is good. Two nods are better. Three nods, people think conversation, bore over, bored person, I'm stopping talking. So one or two nods. You get to look at each other. The point is this. Say, you go buy the books. I don't want to take money out of some poor author's hands. But here's the deal. Listen to each other actively. Actively. Men or women who are sports fans, is the game between southeastern Kentucky and North Dakota State on Tuesday night really such a big deal? Maybe you could miss the first half. Set some priorities that say to your spouse, during this time, you are the most important person in my life. I'm going to listen to you, to your parents, to your children, to your friends. To say to a co-worker or somebody that lives in your apartment building, hey, you know what? I got nothing to do, even though you got a lot to do. I got nothing to do tomorrow at 5.30. How about we go have a cup of coffee? How about you come over to my house, have a lemonade? You see, making those priorities is what Mary did. And that's what I think I would like you to take away as Mary moment. When you talk to each other, be with a friend and listen. Because what do we say? What do we say about Jesus? Where does Jesus lives, live? Where does Jesus live? In me, right? Jesus lives in me. Jesus lives in you. So when you're talking to your spouse, when you're talking to your children, your grandchildren, your friends, when you're talking to your co-workers, the people at the coffee shop, at McDonald's, who are you talking to if they're a Christian? Jesus. Give them the attention that Mary sets as our model. Mary made the better choice. A Mary choice. So that's 25%. That's part of the 25% I want you to remember when you get back to your car. I know all these other words, but uh, gone. But this part, Mary choice. Talk to people. Listen to people. What's the message that that boy in that picture is getting right now? Even if not a word is exchanged, that more important than my work, more important than the ball game, more important than your mother's upset with me, more important than whatever else is going on in my mind, in my world, I'm focused on you child of God. Find some merry moments, would you? Matter of fact, you can text me your merry moments, 920-946-4859. Text me and tell me what your merry moment was this week. Email me, pastorbill at gmail.com. Twitter, pastorbill underscore, no. So you can send me all of those things. I read all this media, but I, here's the thing, you know, I really do. I, this is a truthful thing. I cannot spend time with God with my phone on. Even I'm going to turn it off right now. I'm going to just turn this off because I want you to know that right now, right now, being with you is the most important thing I can do. 
there's nothing more important in my life than letting you know that Jesus loves you. So would you give somebody a merry moment this week and would you let me know about it? Here's the other 15%. That's 10%, okay? That's 10% of the 25% merry moments. Now the other part is 15%. It's a little more important. I'm going to call these alleluia moments. Alleluia. Say Jesus is at your house tonight, right? You have a Bible. You have a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, I have extra Bibles back there. See me after, I'll give you a Bible. Free, our gift to you. We'd love to give you a Bible. You never have to bring it back as long as you promise to read it. Even if you don't promise to read it, bring it home. Someday you'll want to read it. You know, we have to show hospitality to Jesus. What Mary did was a what Martha did was a good thing. She opened up her house to Jesus. And when you open that Bible, 10 minutes, can we start with five? Spending time with Jesus. Say yes to spending time with Jesus. Let your inner Mary come to the feet of Jesus. Because you see, discipleship is about serving Jesus and Jesus' children. But our goal as a church is to help you become a transformed disciple. A transformed disciple. I'm thinking of two songs as I wrote this message. One is Knowing You. You know the chorus of Knowing You? Knowing you, Jesus, knowing you, there is no greater thing. You're my all, you're the best. You know that song? Knowing you, Jesus. Do you believe it? Do you believe that knowing you, Jesus, there is no greater thing? There's another more current song that's out. Your presence is heaven to me now. Hill song, Berlin's ex new song. Your presence is heaven to me. If there is no greater thing than knowing Jesus, if the presence of Jesus is heaven to us, why don't we spend more time in heaven? Surrounded by Jesus. So I'm going to offer you one suggestion, all right? One simple suggestion. I hope it's one you can use. Start with the Psalm a day. I did this a few years ago. It takes some discipline to get into it, but start with Psalm 1. Psalm 1 is pretty short. Psalm 2 is pretty short. Read one Psalm a day, all right? Find a time when you're all alone, totally undistracted. I realize how hard that is to do especially if you have children at home. But find one time. I don't know, you know, if you have to go sit in your car five minutes before you leave for work, take five minutes and read one psalm. Some of the psalms are longer. You've got to break them up, all right? That's okay. You can do that. They have little hints in there about where are good breaking points if you read through. You can get yourself at Sunlight Books or other places a little pocket devotional, a little pocket psalm of the New Testament or just the psalms. Read those. Maybe we should consistently buy everybody a book of Psalms. Maybe that'd be a good thing to do. We'll talk about that. But what I want you to do is try that out, all right? And let me know how it goes. Because then you're going to have what, what are called hallelujah moments, hallelujah moments. Here's one of my favorite, favorite quotes, and I'm almost done. So you can start remembering this 25% of what I said as you go to the car. Augustine, he wrote a long time ago, long, long time ago. But here's what he said. I love this quote. At present, Alleluia is for us a traveler's song. But this tiresome journey brings us closer to home and rest where the only thing that remains will be Alleluia. That is the delightful part that Mary chose for herself as she sat doing nothing but learning and praising. Now someone is distracted. I could not have scripted that better. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because here's how the sermon ends. I'm going to show you how we do this, right? 
you find a spot that you can sit down all alone, and you open your Bible, and nothing else is going on, and you read. Praise awaits you, O God, in Zion. Listen to Jesus. Listen to the voice of Jesus. To you our vows will be fulfilled. O ye who hear prayer, to you all men and women will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Alleluia. Blessed are those who choose and bring near to you to live in court. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. Alleluia. You answer us with awesome deeds of righteousness, O God, our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring seas, the roaring of the waves, and the turmoil of the nations. Hallelujah, Jesus calms the turmoil of my heart. Those living far away fear your wonders, where morning dawns and evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. Hallelujah. You care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with rain. For so you have ordained it, alleluia. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless it with crops. You crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance. Alleluia. Praise Jesus grasslands of the desert overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with grain. They shout for joy and sing. 